I'm often asked, especially by beginner bowyers, whether or not it's worth practicing bow making using green wood. And the emphatic answer to that is yes, of course it is. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a bow in the style of an English longbow within an hour. So why, if you're a beginner, should you make bows from green, freshly felled wood? There are numerous reasons, in my opinion. Firstly, your hands get used to the tools, and during that process, your eyes and your fingers learn a great deal about handling wood. But on top of that, perhaps the most important reason, in my view, is this. When you're working on green wood, which seems easy to find, not difficult to cut, the value of that stave seems much, much lower than one that's been seasoned for years and perhaps cost lots of money. So the odd thing that occurs is that the worry about working that stave suddenly decreases. If in this hand I'd got an expensive piece of yew, I would be apprehensive about working it. But this, well this costs nothing and that is the key to why I think using green wood is really, really a good way for a beginner to start learning the art and craft of bow making. Because when you work on something that's green, your fear just collapses and then you're not held back by apprehension. So let's get on with making an English longbow from ash. This is an ash sapling, Fraxinus excelsior, and it's one of many hundreds growing in this wood that are marked for thinning to give the other trees room to spread and to grow. So this sapling is about two inches in diameter at its base, and there's a long straight piece of the stem that's around about 80 to 85 inches long. There are very few knots all the way up, so it's a good piece of wood to have some practice with. This is the one I'm going to use. This is my ash bow stave, it's 77 inches long and about 2 inches in diameter and I'm now ready to start work. But before I do that, I want to show you the small amount of tools and aids that I will be using to make this green ash longbow. To mark the shape of my longbow onto the ash stave, I'm using a felt marker and a tape rule. There are several ways to shape a green stave, perhaps the least expensive is an axe, but today I should be using a draw knife. And the only other tool that I shall be using during the making of this ash longbow is this, a spoke shave. When working any kind of bow stave, it's really useful to have some means of gripping and supporting the stave. If of course you're using an axe, you use your hands and a chopping block. But when using a draw knife, a vice, or what I'm using, a shave horse is really useful. This is a shave horse, a kind of ancient foot operated vice. But don't despair if you've not got one. This cost me absolutely nothing to build and there's a link up there in the corner showing you how I did it. So I'm now ready to start work on this green ash bow. But let me say this now, green wood will not give you a heavy draw weight bow, it will not give you a fast bow and it will certainly not give you a bow that's going to last you for years and years. But what it will give you is practice. That's the whole purpose of this video, to show that if you are a beginner, using green wood is a great way to start teaching your hands and eyes how to make a bow. Just past 10am, let's start work making this green ash longbow, hopefully within the space of an hour. The first job is to decide which is the belly and which is the back of this bow. The back of a bow faces away from the archer. So I'm looking over this stave to see which part of it has the least amount of knots. I'm also keen to find out where the straightest line can be achieved along the bow. That will be the belly. That will be the string line. And on this stave, I've decided that this here will be the back of the bow, the piece of the bow facing away from me. And this will be the belly. The belly is where most of the work that I'm going to do next takes place. An easy way of establishing a string line is to run a piece of cord 
or in this case, a little piece of Dacron bowstring along what is the intended belly of this bow. That will establish a straight line right up the middle. So that's the string line now established on this longbow. Next, mark the centre of the stave. I'm now marking 8 inches either side of the centre mark. This is the central portion of the bow. I'm now marking 8 inches in from each tip. So now I have a mark at the centre of this bow, 8 inches either side of that centre and 8 inches in from the tip. The next job is to draw the tapers. So I've now marked the shape of a longbow onto the belly of this ash stave. To make it clear what I've done, I'll put a diagram on the screen along with dimensions. So now, using the draw knife, I'm going to start cutting this stave down to those guidelines. I'm effectively working on the sides of this bow. So all I'm doing now is working towards and up to the lines and not going beyond them. They're only coarse guides to the shape of this bow. So treat them as that, work near to them, but not beyond them. So that's the first bit of work done. This is the back of the bow and these are now the sides. And I've got kind of a rectangular shape which I'll now work down in the other direction. This is going to be the belly. And now I should be working this down until it's approximately the thickness that I'm looking for. So I've now marked on the sides of this bow the taper from the handle down to the tips. Again, I'll put a diagram on the screen, including dimensions, to show you what I've done. So now I'm working on the belly of this bow. That is the back, that is away from me. This is going to be the belly. This is what I'm cutting next. So now I have something beginning to resemble a longbow. The next tool is the spoke shape. This is where I refine the shape a little more carefully than I can do with a draw knife. So on to that next. So the shape that I'm working towards is best imagined by thinking of a squashed rectangle. If this bow was to be cut in half, it would be like a very shallow rectangle, fairly wide, with slightly bulging, rounded corners. I'm not aiming to make a heavy draw weight bow. In fact, quite the opposite. I want to make a very light draw weight bow here to show you that the main important thing about making a green bow is to achieve some success. To get a bow that bends fairly well and launches an arrow, it doesn't matter that it doesn't go far. The main and important thing about this exercise is to give you confidence in making bows. Because if you're successful in making a 10, 15 or 20 pound draw weight green bow from ash or whatever other wood you can lay your hands on, then you'll be boosted by that success. That little bit of success can carry a long way forward in making your next bow, whether that be green or from seasoned wood. So don't expect here a heavy draw weight bow. You'll not get one. I'll be lucky to get 10, 15 pounds maybe, perhaps a little bit more. That isn't the point. The point is that it's a bow. And that's what I'm trying to put over to you 
working Greenwood is a great way to achieve your first success. So I've cut some simple side knocks into this bow, effectively just angled V grooves cut into the side of the bow. So there's this bow strung. It doesn't look too bad, but you can see just how thin the wood is and how I strung it showed that it's really quite weak. But that isn't the point. The point is, if you were to make one of these and succeed in getting this far, you'll have a smile on your face. And that piece of encouragement will drive you through your second bow with far greater confidence than you would have had if this had broken. But let's see what to do if it doesn't look like a bow when you string it. Oh, and by the way, an hour and a half has passed since I started making this bow. But you get the point, it doesn't take very long. So what do you do if when you string your bow, it, well, it doesn't look like a bow? Let's use this steel ruler as a way to explain what to do next. So we all know, almost intuitively, what a strung bow looks like. It's rather like that. And if you've succeeded doing this with your first bow, well done. Because what you've done is you've spread evenly the tension and the compression equally across all the limbs. But what if it looks like that? Or if it looks like that? Or worse, it looks like that? What these shapes are telling you is that the stresses are not evenly spread across both limbs. So let's say, for example, it looks like that. Well, what's happened there is that this limb is really strong and this limb is really weak. The only way to get out of that is to weaken this limb here and then it will do that. And what if it's like this? Well, what that means is the middle is too weak and the limbs are too strong. What you've got to do is weaken the limbs and then the bow will do that. So this really is your first lesson in bow baking. It's really hard to teach and it's quite hard to learn. But if your bow is doing that, you're doing well. If it's doing that, all that's happening is what happened to me time and time again. I would not got the stresses and strains of each limb matched equally. And I can't show you really how to fix it. But by doing this and understanding that by weakening these it'll do that or if I do this by weakening one of them it'll do that then you're well on the way to understanding the problems that you will face and how to solve them as well so when you've strung your bow if it doesn't look right don't worry it's a lesson to be learned just weaken the limb that looks strong and then recheck the shape there's various ways of viewing how your bow bends you can put them on a tiller like this so if you put your bow on some kind of support like this, you can stand back from it and it's much easier to assess the shape from a distance than it is close up. Using this, you can also draw it and watch the limbs move and see whether that even shape is maintained throughout the entire draw. But if you've not got a post like this, there are other ways of assessing how your bow bends. Here's a simple one. It's called floor tillering. No strings fitted for this, put one end on the ground Take a firm grip of this end and bend it in the middle and you can watch how the limbs bend. Turn the bow round and do the same thing. Personally though, I find it quite difficult to assess the shape of the limbs in this way. I much prefer, if I can, to try to stand back from the shape if possible. But this is a perfectly good way of starting to learn how to tiller a bow. So I've found a place where I can hook the bowstring onto this tray and I can draw it and watch the limbs bend. It's a really simple but effective way of seeing how well you're progressing with the bend on your limbs. But if you've got this far, do give yourself a pat on the back because many people sadly fail to get this far. Their bow breaks perhaps during stringing or the first times they try to draw it. Working on a green bow, even a light one like this, might give you some success and if it does you're on your way to being a bow maker so here it is my green ash bow broadly in the style of an english longbow draw weight 18 to 20 pounds if that but that is not the important thing the important thing is that you've seen that it's not too difficult to make a bow from green wood so why not go out 
get yourself some green wood whether it's ash or another species and have a try you don't need many tools you don't need much space you don't need a wood to make a bow like this in you can do it in your backyard you can do it in a shed space and tools are not important what's important is success and working on a green bow is the easiest way in my opinion to enjoy making your first bow if you'd like to see me make other bows check out the various links here and in the description below see you next time